Apes on Film. Apes on Film. When the big studios bet big, they're not betting on movies, not as one-offs. They're betting on franchises, what Marvel calls a cinematic universe. Fox is out this month with the second installment of their Simeon Cinematic Universe, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Simply stunning in so many ways and without question the best received since the original in 1968. 91% favorable on Rotten Tomatoes, top box office draw two weeks running, and it's Gary C's favorite film of the year. Hate to be the curmudgeon here, but I didn't like it as much as I hoped I would. But I think it's my problem more than the films, but I'm getting ahead of myself. First, let me salute the achievement. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is an astonishing technical milestone. Actor Andy Serkis and the CGI wizards at Weta have been perfecting their dark arts since Gollum first scrambled into view. Since then, the world has cranked through a half dozen complete cycles of Moore's Law. Software breakthroughs have upped the game. So now it's not just capturing motion, but the physics and anatomy are modeled on a deep layer, muscle straining, fat jiggling under the skin. We're not just talking fur anymore, but dry fur, damp fur, soaked fur, matted fur, whatever you want. And we're not just talking motion capture on a green screen stage, but now they can do it on location in an actual forest. The result is that for all you can tell, this movie is performed by a real group of intelligent apes who've been to acting school, handed a script, and set loose in the woods. The lead apes, Caesar, played by Andy Serkis, his treacherous lieutenant Koba, played by Toby Kebbell, his son Blue Eyes, played by Nick Thurston, and the wise old orangutan Maurice, played by Karen Conaval, all display emotional resonance that's going to get to you. And the scenes of San Francisco after the fall of civilization, brilliantly and wittily conceived by production designer James Chidland. And what's more, it's a smart script, in many ways a brave script, in some ways a prophetic script, by Mark Bombach, Rick Jaffa, and Amanda Silva. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is mainly about the apes, as it should be. It's their planet now. Well, no, they don't actually have the planet. Just one forest, Muir Woods, across the Golden Gate Bridge from San Francisco, which I presume they won by vanishing the Ewoks, who used to live there. Apes get most of the screen time. The humans, with a few exceptions, are relegated to being the faceless enemy. The exceptions, first, our hero, human family. They bond with ape-in-chief Caesar and trade favors. And second, a couple of human villains from the neocon school of diplomacy. Let's just go invade them and wipe them out. Matched by an ape with a symmetrically opposing worldview, let's just go get the humans before they get us. So if it's so good, what's my problem? Well, the villains, for one, they seem a little stock and shallow to me. Not even Gary Oldman can do much with what they've given him. Frankly, the ape villain's part is better written and better played. And then, too, the prequel problem. I saw the original when it first opened in 1968. I got there early enough not to have been spoiled about the twist ending. That film was made as a standalone. They weren't planning on sequels or prequels. They just showed us the end state of some sequence of events. Only after the film was a big hit did they try and work out an ad hoc series of prequels leading up to it. I saw them all. All. This new reboot has a huge advantage over the first series. Since it's planned from the start as a series, they're just being a lot smarter about how it all unfolds. But we know what has to happen. They have to unwind the world that we know and leave the apes dominant. Too often I get the feeling that what's happening on screen is just driven by those plot necessities. Come on, we need a battle. How do we get that to happen? The original Planet of the Apes was a camp romp. Actors with silly shuffling gates and bits of latex glued to their faces. There were two exciting action set pieces in the original. A hunt, gorillas on horseback rounding up humans, and a chase when Charlton Heston escapes and apes scramble to recapture him. As for the rest, however, that film was slow, talky, and filled with heavy-handed jokes. Human see, human do. <laughs> but it had one critical advantage over the new series. It was a new idea! A new idea! What? Apes are in charge? I have been living with those damn dirty apes for a very long time now. I've seen all of them. Forgive me, but I have ape fatigue. Your mileage may vary. If you come to the current cycle with fresh eyes, I think you'll enjoy it. Dawn starts with an homage to the 1968 film, a spectacular hunting sequence, and it ends on a page-turner, a striking image that raises as many questions as it answers. If you get hooked on this franchise, you'll want to know what happens next. By the way, if you do follow along as the series unfolds, keep this question in mind. How many films into the franchise will it be before a female, ape or human, holds any sort of power, has any character complexity? So far, it's pure patriarchy. At least in the first film, a female chimpanzee was depicted as a respected leading scientist. But there's something else, the third thing that makes me squirm, and this is something the filmmakers can't have known, and I can't blame them for it. They released a film about war breaking out just as the Israel-Hamas conflict boils over, and the Russian-Ukrainian aggression results in a downed passenger plane. They released a film about hysterical xenophobia, just as hate-filled Southern Californians are caught on camera, reviling frightened refugee children on a bus. Certainly the filmmakers have nothing to do with what's going on in the news. That's not their fault. But what's going on in the news just 
kept me squirming all through their film. So that's what my problem comes down to. One, shallow villains. Two, eight, fatigue. And three, too close to today's headlines. Until next time, I'm Mikola. DVD extras. In the reboot, there's a wise orangutan named Maurice, played by Karen Cannaval. And she did a lot of her homework at my local zoo, Seattle's Woodland Park Zoo. She spent hours with these guys, my neighbors, a community of five orangutans, most of them born here in this zoo. The patriarch is Tawan. He was born in 1968, the year of the first Planet of the Apes movie. I'll link to the zoo blog if you want to read more about Karen Cannaval, learning from Tawan and the other Seattle orangutans. I presume the orangutan is called Maurice in tribute to Morris Evans, the actor who played Dr. Zaius in the original. Evans was a renowned Shakespearean actor, and my high school English teacher told me he was also a notoriously spitty actor, who drenched his fellow players and the front row of the audience in saliva. When I saw him in Apes, covered in that latex makeup, all I could think of was how grateful Roddy McDowell, Kim Hunter, and Charlton Heston must have been to have Maurice Evans safely contained behind a latex spit guard. Well, no... That's not all I could think of. I kept wondering how wet it was getting inside that mask. John Chambers devised the original latex pieces for Planet of the Apes. He won the first ever Academy Award for makeup for that. Chambers is also known for another iconic latex appliance. He developed the pointy ears for Mr. Spock. But there's more to the John Chambers story. In the 70s, he contracted with the CIA to develop disguise kits for American spies. You see that orangutan over there? Spy. And still more, Chambers was a key player in the fake movie caper that helped a bunch of Americans escape from the Canadian embassy in Iran. That's the incident that became the film that won an Oscar for Ben Affleck and rehabilitated his reputation. So if it weren't for John Chambers, Affleck would never have been cast as Batman. In Argo, John Chambers is played by John Goodman. Here's some goodies for you. Trailer to Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Here a related theme. Eddie Izzard's routine about a monkey with a gun. Hat tip to Adam Rag. That's funny. And speaking of Eddie Izzard, he's in this movie. I reviewed it last week as part of my series of movies about movies. One final treat, a mashup of The Simpsons' Planet of the Apes musical with Don and Bobby Draper from Mad Men. I wonder if Bobby Draper took his kids to see the new ape movie. Bye now. <laughs>